got to know what's in your heart. I remember. I remember, I remember, I remember. When I was courting my wife and she was living at her sister's house. And um, we went there and stalking with her, trying to get off some of the stress of the struggle that she was going through to the time. I remember many times when I was leaving, tears would be running down her face. And uh, I'd try to keep a straight face, you know. A man, you know, just, it's going to be all right, man, one day. I'll come, but I won't have to leave. Uh, can I talk to somebody? I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, it, it was painful at times sometimes to leave when they got closer to the dates and the heat was turning up at their location. Because the devil knows sometime when you're about to move out. He starts to do some things to rock the boat. And to cause some pain and make the thing more stressful and difficult. But I remember when not one night I was going home and hallelujah the Lord was saying this song in my heart that just the same way son. I want you to be where I am. And he reminded me of what Jesus said in John chapter 14. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 My God, it's been 27 years now. But she's still where I am. And I'm still where she is. But the devil tried a lot between to get that report changed. But she's still where I am. And I'm still where she is. And I never got up a day and said to her, hey, I'm leaving you. And she never got up a day and said to me, I'm leaving you. 27 years. Hello, somebody. I never got up a day and said, I'm getting a divorce. And she never said that to me. And I know some others have some different reports. Come on, somebody. But I want you to know it's not luck that did this thing. But if you keep God in the middle, I said if you keep God in the middle, and you do what you should do, and the other partner do what they should do, you don't have to worry about the naysayers that say we give you one year, two, three. Uh, you won't make it round the turn because nothing good not going to come from you. But God will give you an opportunity to prove them wrong because I want to be where uh, you don't want to stand what I'm talking about here. I want to be where I want to be where I'm thinking about it how many years I've been talking to the Lord and I never seen him in his full glory we have a great relationship going on but I'm thinking about it what God what a day when I see you just like I'm looking at you glory to God Hallelujah. And I'm waiting on that day. Anybody waiting? <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Some of my friends are over there. Waiting on me. 
some of my brothers over there waiting on me some of my sisters over there waiting on me anybody but I know there's one face I surely got to see cause I want to be where I want to be there. Anybody got it in the spirit? Say what me. Right there, Jesus. See you face to face. And know your amazing grace. You took me through many dark lanes. Lonely Avenue. I didn't know that what I should do. But you took me through. You took me through. You took me through. You took and I wanna be with anybody, 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 anybody. You might not understand what I've been through, but I wanna be there where you are, Lord. If my family leave, I still want to be. Oh, you don't get that one. <laughs> if my wife leave, I still want to be. Yeah. Out in the cold, still want to be where. Woo! Come on, somebody worship him in this atmosphere. Yeah. You gotta know him for yourself. You gotta know him for yourself. And said, Lord, I wanna be real. Yeah. I saw many start the race and got off course and never made it back. But I wanna be here on the track. Cause I wanna be where my God. Don't want to lose my crown. Want to be real. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to be there. Come on, somebody. Ain't no worshipers in the room. Lord have mercy. But I know for myself. <laughs> yeah, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Uh, for you're with me, a rod and your staff. They comfort me. Uh, hey, Lord, I want to be there on that day. On that day, I'm not running when you say the time is up. On that day, Lord, I'm not scared about what people are gonna say because I know you, I know you, I know, I know, I know, I know you. Mm. Come on, somebody worship him. I was laying in my room. And I was reflecting on that day. And I was thinking, you know, God has given me this peace in my spirit. That I'm one of the ones who made it. You don't have to believe me. But I have that inner witness in my spirit. There's a song of one of my brothers who says, Millions did make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Oh, millions did make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Millions did. 
was one of the ones who did so glad millions did to make it but I was I made it over into her trouble and tribulation I was one of the ones who did I made it over had praise and didn't believe that I would make it but I was one of the ones who did I made it over child that pushed me aside but I made up my mind to see inside I made it over yeah, he didn't be looking at me shining with God in victory because I said millions did make it but I was one of the ones who yeah, millions did make it but I was one of the ones who one more time say Hey, I made it over. Came to great trials and tribulation. And I was one of the ones who did. I made it over. Had friends that didn't believe I would make it, but I want to testify. I made it. I made it over. To great trials and tribulation. Hey, you sell my salvation. I made it over. You gave me strength to keep me, even in my weakness. That's why I say, millions did, but I was. Hey, millions did make it. Millions did make it. Anybody in the number can say. But I was sorry, me and But I was me and But I was all given a praise. <laughs> Not everybody will be glad for you. But I know somebody who will. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to get in the word because we know the word of God is quick. And it's powerful and it is sharper than any twisted sword. Welcome to the house of prayer, power, and praise. We believe that God has called the house of God a house of prayer for a purpose. It's a place of communication with God. It's not just monologue, it's dialogue. Hallelujah. And it is saying then that you ain't just talking to him, but you're listening to him talking to you and uh, prayer is more about you listening than about you talking because if you were to pray without ceasing as the word encourage you to do you would run out of words and because all the things you're telling God he already know anyway but you need to talk to him to spur a conversation with him for him to tell you some things you don't know that will help to position you in a place that he wants you to go. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, this life has its share of problems and difficulties. Hello, somebody. But we have a present help in the time of trouble. Hello. And his name is the Lord. He is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And he didn't come just for us to feel goosebumps and feel nice. He wants us in the family. The family of God. The greatest family in all creation. Amen. And he has given the kingdom to his family. Sons and daughters of the most high God.
You're called to make that stand. Hello, somebody. You're called to make that stand. And the devil is trying everything to get us to move away from our position in God. But you've got to make that stand. You've got to what? Make that stand. The word of God says, stand fast in the liberty where which Christ has set you free. Galatians 5 verse 1. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Praise God. Be not what? Entangled again with the with a yoke of bondage, what held you in captivity and in slavery was sin. And he called you out to that for you not to keep meddling in it and hope that you still survive with his mercy. And Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians to tell them, man, what you're coming to is not some bread and butter thing. And this is a big deal. Hello, somebody. And will God bring you into this thing not for you to go back to religion? Hallelujah. It's for you to have true salvation. And when you have true salvation, it brings forth the fruit of righteousness. Come on now. And true holiness in Christ Jesus. So you don't need to mix up and tangle up to get anything better on it. Come on somebody because it's the righteousness of God. You can't improve on the righteousness of God. You can't improve on the holiness of God. Hello, God's holiness is perfect. His righteousness is perfect. Come on now. His nature is perfect. And when that nature comes and dwells in you, you're a different being entirely. You're not trying to be different. Not the same old being trying to be different. That's what religion has taught us. That we are sinners trying to be good. And God wants to be true with sinners. He wants saints. Sinners don't have any place in his kingdom. And he wants to give the kingdom to you. I'm on the word of God said it's his good pleasure to give to us the kingdom. It is what his good pleasure means that he delight, he's delighted to give it to us. My God, he's excited about us having it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And if you don't have that kingdom mindset, you are going to lose out on that inheritance. Because you're so mindful about flesh, about money, about the cares of this world. Many of them have lost their salvation because of those cares. Come on now. Because of what? Those cares of this world. Come on. Is the Father good pleasure to what? Give to you what? The kingdom. It's not heaven. Oh my God. The kingdom of heaven is not heaven. Just as Jesus of Nazareth is not Nazareth. Right. So we got to understand what is given is the kingdom. Dominion and power was lost by man when he entered into sin. And Jesus said it into St. John 8, hallelujah, verse 34. Anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Hallelujah. And he says, but the slave does not remain in the house. Come on now. The slave what? He's in the house, but he does not remain there. Psalms 1 said, the, the, the unrighteous shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They will not stand there. So he says, those who are in sin, he says, hey, you are a slave to sin. And slave to sin, though they are in the father's house, will not remain there. Come on now. But he says the son will remain. And if the son set you free, come on now. Now if the son set you free, you can still be a sinner. 
If he set you free, you can't still be a slave. You got to get the thing. If he set you free, you can't still be a slave. Come on. But there are slaves going around that they're free. Runaway slaves are not free. There are still slaves who have run away. But he wants to set you free indeed. Come on. So it's not a runaway slave he's calling into his house. Oh, Jesus. Come on now. Slave does not abide in the house forever. But what? But a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free. There's a need for him to use the word, if the son... Ah, Jesus. Because some have claimed some freedom without the Son. Ah, Jesus. Some have claimed some freedom that they say, I'm free because my heart is clean and I go at good heart. And I'm good to people. Some have found some goodness without the Lord. Some have found some righteousness without Jesus. And there is no such thing. He says our righteousness without him is like filthy rags. Come on. And if you really read the texts that speak about filthy rags, he's not talking about cloth you use to bathe yourself and it get dirty. He's talking about menstrual pads. Women wouldn't have those parts, those times they would have use rags to conceal themselves when they are having their monthly menstruation. And he says they would have to put it in the earth, bury it. It couldn't use again. Let me make it clear for you. So he's saying then, if that righteousness cannot be used, you need a different righteousness and he says this righteousness is not the righteousness of man lord jesus this is the righteousness of god hello and he says this righteousness is in christ jesus our savior and what did he come to save us from all our sins so he didn't come to save you with your sins because uh -huh. some got that thing mixed up and think some over they can got sin and still be saved it's not so he came to save you from your sins so when he says our righteousness are like filthy rags ah, my God is saying this is unclean Look what he said in verse 6 of Isaiah 64. We are all like unclean thing. We are all like an unclean thing. All our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf. And our iniquities which are sin, like the wind, have taken us away. Who has those sin taken us away from? From God. It is one thing that separates us. From God. And it is sin. So when those who said. Well nothing can separate us. From the love of God. Because no height. No depth. No breadth. Make sure you check through this. It don't include sin. No height. No breadth. No depth. Come on now. No principalities, no powers. Ha, not life, not death. But he did not say not sin. Because sin separates you from God. Come on. For there is no sin in him. Talk to me somebody. There is no sin in him. So you can't be in him with sin. Lord Jesus. Now there's a lot of preachers and a lot of churches and a lot of deacons and a lot of ushers, a lot of evangelists and pastors and teachers 
need to step down now. Need to step down now and take a humble seat at the feet of Jesus and get the house in order. And as we would say in Jamaica, wheel and come again. Because you can't be out there telling the people, stop sinning, and you still sinning. That was the very reason why the Lord spoke so angrily against the Pharisees. He says they sit in the seat of Moses. And they, they function from an office like a prophet amongst his people to speak and to declare his word. But he says, nevertheless, they who are telling the people not to steal were stealing. They were telling the people not to lie and they were lying. They were telling the people not to commit adultery and they were doing the same. He says, do you think you'll be exempt from judgment because you tell people not to do it while you are doing it. Oh, you don't know that one. Come on, somebody. Paul wrote about that one in Romans chapter 2 and said, Now a Jew may be boasting over the Gentile and say, I got the word, I got the law, I'm in covenant with God, I'm circumcised, I'm not an uncircumcised fellow like the Gentiles, and we are in covenant with God. But he says, But if the Gentiles by nature, without the law, do those things that are in the law and you have the law preaching it and not doing it the gentiles are more jews than you or oh, you need to read them thing there so you can understand in our scenario say the senior out there would be more christian than you if you say you're christian and you're not living life but the one you call sinner stop they do what you still they do talk to me now and so many have this grace thing as a broad blanket to cover their uh, stinking behavior. You know when something is all right in the room and they just use something and just cover it up. Ah, oh, Jesus. But the Lord want that cleaned out because those righteousness is said. You get the filter rag part now. Because mm. he cover up something or two. Mm -hmm. And the lady say amen. Hallelujah. So he says then, that have to throw away, it cannot reuse. It can recycle. So since it should not be recycled, we can use that sense of righteousness that we had under religion and make it. Because religion does offer some sense of discipline. It has some rules and regulation to regulate the sinner. To make him improve on his behavior. But he's still a sinner. In other words, it does not transform him. Ah, Jesus. And Paul wrote about that too. That the law, the, those who are going by religion, he says, hey, this, this religion, it has some sense of self-discipline and things, discipline you put on yourself. And some sense of false humility. But it doesn't stop you from indulging in the flesh. It does not stop you from indulging in the flesh. Come on. So he said then, if it don't stop you from indulging in the flesh, then are you going to be saved? No. Because he says, all those that practice the works of the flesh, come on, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 tells you those works of the flesh. And Paul said, I said it to you before. And I say it to you again, and I'm even saying it now. In other words, the message has not changed. Come on, somebody. He said, these are the works. These are the what? The works of the flesh. And he says, those who are not under the law. 
are being led by the spirit therefore they are not engaging in these works because those who are led by the spirit do not engage in those work that's the point what Paul is writing in Galatians is making a difference between self effort through flesh and the power of the Holy Spirit working in the flesh to produce a new life and he's saying this is not the same life you knew under religion under the law the law was given to you by God but God never gave them the law to save them that Paul made it clear to them, say, it was not given to them to save them. It was given to point out their sins and to show them how sinful sin is and the detriment that follows that lifestyle. So Paul calls that, that ministry that the law came with, the ministry of condemnation and the ministry of death. Come on. But he says it was necessary for them to appreciate salvation. Being under condemnation would make you desire salvation. Being under death would make you desire new life. So he says if we are trying to offer something to you, you don't see the need for. It's a hard sell. Ever hear a sell man say that? I still say it's a hard sell because if he's trying to sell something to you, you don't see the need of, you don't want it. Not true. So the thing is that the law first came to show man, show up in man. That's what Paul said. I wouldn't have known sin is sin till the law come. So the law was there showing up. Say, this is what is going on in a year, you know. Come on now. And he, that's why Paul could examine himself in Romans chapter 6 and say, I find in me, in me, a law working against my members. Come on. The law of sin working in me. That the thing that I want to do, I find myself not doing it. And the thing that I should do, huh? I don't find myself doing it, but what I shouldn't do, that I find myself doing. Come on now. And he says, why was this happening in me? He says, this is happening because the law operating in me, that is the na sinful nature, is overcoming my desire to please God. Every person under religion have that problem. They have the word of God. They're trying to please God, but still not pleasing him. You will not be accepted in the kingdom just for effort. That trying to please him and not pleasing him will not grant you access. It is the doers of the word that are blessed. It's not the triers. Come on. The Lord can't say, well done, if you never do it. <laughs> Come on. And many want to hear, well done, and they don't do nothing. And if you ain't do nothing, what you going to get well done about? Come on, because God is not a liar. James 1 verse 22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. What? deceiving yourselves when a person deceives themselves will they be saved no because deception is of the deceiver the devil and if you're under his way you are not under God's leadership and so Paul is making a description between him being under the law to him now being under grace. Between him being under the powers of the fallen flesh to him being now under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's calling walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he's saying it's two different life. Lord Jesus, it's not an enhancing of my life. It's a new life he has given to me. It's a life that I didn't have before. It's not the life I had before in come and tune up and renovate and do a patchwork and say, wow, see, you got new life. No, he has given me. 
I had to die to that life to receive the life that he's given me. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If I don't die to that old man, I cannot truly wear, put on and wear the new man which is in, created in Christ in true righteousness and holiness. Come on now. So it's not a play, play life. Lord Jesus. Because many will tell you, I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. I judge for myself. I listen to my spirit. I know God. I don't need nobody to teach me. Those people are leading to error. And those who follow them also go into error. Lord Jesus, because you cannot step away from God's provision for your salvation and still be saved. Did you hear that? No one can step away from God's provision for their salvation and still be saved. Men looked upon Jesus and said, "Is a man. We don't need to follow no man. We believe in God. Come on. You check that out in St. John 8. They said that to Jesus. Come on. Reading from the same 38 or 36. Hallelujah in that verse. He read from verse 32 to 34. Right, 34, 36 going on, it says, if the son makes you free, he says, you shall be free indeed. So he says, they, they said, I know that, he said to them, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has what? My word have no place in you. And they thought, though we don't believe in your word, we still believe in God. Can we believe the law? And the law is the word of God. That's what they believe. Just like some people today. We still believe the word of God. The word of God is the Bible. We don't need no man. But he didn't say if the law set you free. The law was the written Bible. And he didn't say if it set you free. He said if the son. There's a son sent. Watch the thing. And he said, No, the son said, the and they said, We are descendants of Abraham. We don't need you. He says, I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Come on, give me some more on that. Come on. So if Jesus said, I speak what I have heard from my father, and you do what you hear from yours, is it the same father? Yet still the Lord started out the argument by saying to them, I know you are descendants of Abraham. And being descendants of Abraham, shouldn't they have the same father? But the Lord said, hey, but a nature is operating in you that did not operate in Abraham. Abraham didn't seek to kill me. Abraham didn't seek to turn away when one declared the word of God. Abraham did not contend with the one who speak the word of God. Abraham met Melchizedek one day. Not one year of hearing him. One day and tied to him 10% of all he possessed. Not just of his earnings. Of all he possessed. So what made Abraham do that when the law came 430 years later by Moses when the priesthood, Aaron priesthood was just established. So what made Abraham do that before the law was ever given to tithe? The spirit. If the spirit is in you, you don't need the law to tell you that you need to do it. Come on, somebody, but some people need a written law. They don't understand the law was written because of people who would not hear. That's why it's put in writing. Because they would not hear. First Timothy 1 verse 8 to 10 say, The law was written for the disobedient, the unbelievers, men, stealers, homosexual, liars, thief, idolaters. Sinners. In other words, those who will not hear. 
it was written for Lord Jesus Lord Jesus so it says where is the spirit of God in you come on look at who the law is written for everybody today and thy law look at the list you see any saint there you don't see the list mentioning people who the Lord said will not inherit the kingdom of God we just gave it from Galatians chapter 5 verse 9 to 21 listing all of these things you know, that those who do such things shall not inherit it so who is it given to come on he says you must know that the law is not made for a righteous person come on now somebody now if you receive the righteousness of God or you're not righteous if he came to take away your sin or you still have sin come on if he came to make you into a new creation or you're still behaving like the old one that's why there's so much if in those scriptures because he's saying some people are posing to have something they don't really have because the fruit from it is not coming forward hello come on those who are of God don't contend with those who God sent to lead them when I find people contend with me know they are, I know they have a different spirit because I found that everywhere when a person jump up to contend with what Jesus said he rebukes Satan you know he don't say well you just have a different view than me and I need to hear your view so I can put it in my view and see which view can work better talk to me somebody you need to understand this is not an opinion thing we are not called to preach opinion to you I don't operate in the flesh you need to know which leadership you're under I don't operate in the flesh that dead long time and I don't have to talk spooky for the Lord to talk and we get to that diva oh, thus said the Lord even when I'm speaking to you just like this the Lord is speaking to you because it's not the sound of my voice it's not the tone it's the word that's being revealed through me to you the source it came from is the Lord so I, I, when I speak the word I don't speak the word and opinion this is my opinion of what this means I don't do that I've done that years ago and cut that off a long time cut it off come on why oh, is that possible because I'm not walking in the flesh and when you develop that, that connection with the Lord to keep speaking only what he gives you to speak and shut your mouth when you don't have nothing to say, then you're going to find that your words are always the word of the Lord. That's why every word the Lord spoke was the word of the Lord. He said, they are not mine. There are things that he said that the disciples didn't understand till after he died. They said, oh, we remember there is a scripture for true that said that would be done and it is fulfilled when he did that. They didn't understand it at the time. They thought he was just doing it. But everything he do bears weight of the teachings of the Lord. My God, even when the Lord go to a, to a fig tree and it have no fruit, and in condemn that fig tree, it must die. It was not done arbitrarily as something that he just do because he hungry and he go on the tree, there's no fruit and he have power to curse the tree and just curse the tree and lift the tree if he die because he just feel like curse a tree today because he hungry. 
A lot of people can interpret it that way. Say Jesus acted in the flesh, but men have studied the word afterwards and found that Jesus was doing this as a symbol, as a lesson to Israel. Israel is always regarded in the scripture as a fig tree. And even when the Lord was speaking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, when he talked about what will be the sign of the coming, he said, when you see the figs start to bear it, then you know so the end is near. He's still talking to Israel. And he's saying to them, because I come to get fruit from you, and you didn't minister it to me, nobody's going to eat of you. You're going to wither up and die from the root your root should be in me but you have been disconnected <laughs> God didn't give you the law for you to have a religion God give you the law for you to seek salvation that's why the law points you to Christ but he says it now you find that you're seeking salvation in the law without Christ and he said, no, that same thing you're seeking salvation from is going to condemn you. Come on, somebody. So the same way the Lord was saying to them, hey, you, you heard the word. You heard the word from God and Moses declared that word to you and put it in writing. But he says, didn't Moses speak to you? That he knew that one day that body would drop. But he said he spoke to you of another prophet coming who you should hear. In other words, somebody's going to come in human flesh to talk to you. Just like how oh, I, Moses, is talking to you. Hearing the word of God and speaking it to you. Somebody's going to hear the word of God and speak to you. And that prophet, you must hear him. Because anyone who don't hear him will die. Come on. A lot of people today, they will still say, no, I, I hear God and I trust God, but I don't trust no man. They forget, of course, that Christ is the man, Christ Jesus. And that the word of God says, anyone said Christ did not come in the flesh is the Antichrist. Anyone said he didn't come as human is Antichrist because he did come as a human. So coming as a human didn't mean that he's not God. The spirit in that body is not human. And that's why I could say it was God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Come on somebody. Then Paul come and say it is, it is no more I that live but it is Christ in me. Come on. The life I live is not my own but it's Christ. I live of the faith of the son of God come on somebody so he says because Christ is in me I can reveal Christ to you so he didn't say I'm preaching to you Christianity I'm preaching to you about Christ he says no I preach Christ to you come on and him crucified he said I'm releasing his life to you hallelujah and he said without that life you can't live Come on, somebody. So you got to understand when, when you're calling to this thing, God didn't call you into some makeup fantasy story. This is the real deal. Can I talk to somebody here? And many who say they don't need nobody because the Lord, they can hear the Lord for themselves, they're going to end up in error. Because those people believe they could hear the Lord for themselves. Why then were the apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers sent to them? If they couldn't hear from the Lord at all, they couldn't come to those apostles and prophets, you know, and they would not hear their teachings. So they did hear from the Lord. Every disciple that came to the Lord heard from the Lord because the Lord says, none can come unto me except the Spirit draw them. So they did hear from the Lord to come to be his disciple. They didn't leave their career to follow him everywhere when for him to make them apostles just because they just feel they want to follow a man. They heard the voice of the Lord. But their connection with the man was important to their connection to the Lord. Some don't get that yet. And that's why the cross won't mean not much to them. Because they're still thinking, no, uh, God alone going to do it. But they don't understand God did not die on no cross. 
is a man die on the cross it was flesh and blood that was nailed to it spirit never nailed to no cross and because they decide not to trust no flesh and blood ah Jesus now they left in error now they becoming spoiled now they becoming corrupt and instead of leading others to Christ they only causing more to leave out of Christ because it's pure corruption coming out of their mouth everybody who listen to them become corrupt because they corrupt too. you check them with those one that said they in Christ and then can show you one smarty them bring to the Lord they are corrupt and corrupting others because there's even Philip who wasn't an apostle go down as Samira in Acts chapter 8 and bring a whole Samira to Peter and John who were apostles for the and them for the Holy Ghost he was down there preaching and he wasn't an apostle he was one of the brethren that were scattered from the great persecution of the apostles in Jerusalem. He said, the word of God said in Acts chapter 8, all the apostles remained in Jerusalem, but the members were scattered. And Philip, being one of them that scattered, go down to Samaria and preaching what he learned from the apostles. That's why after he preached it to them and he baptized them, he couldn't make them receive the Holy Spirit. You have to wait and the apostles will come to lay on, on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Though he had the Holy Spirit, he couldn't make them receive it. <laughs> Enough people don't read them thing there. They read it, but they don't understand it, Apostle. Why they don't understand? They won't listen to anyone who God has appointed to undo and fully understanding to them. They think that the understanding they are given is to manipulate all they think, and they will not have that. You're going to hear how I think and you're going to take how I think because it's so I think and how I think is how I think. You can think how you think, but I think how I think. So stay with your thinking till you're stinking. Because God's going to deal with you and that thinking. Every thought will be brought into judgment. Correct? Right? So that's why you are given teachers to correct thoughts. The child don't get something wrong in the class because that day was just a day for the child get it wrong. The child get it wrong because the child is thinking about what he has learned in the wrong way that the teacher has to show him say, don't think about it that way, think about it this way and you will come to the right conclusion. You will get the right sum out of it because if you see in six and I'm showing you there is eight you can still see the other two after I show the other two. And you're still there telling me, say, I six, you see. Something wrong with that. So now you're not a student. Come on now. Now you go tell it, well, man, count six. I mean, okay, what you tell me, me done a six, me see. Come on. I wonder how some of them going to teach. And they don't even get taught yet. Hallelujah. So you have to understand the thing is that if you observe these things and allow the word of God to soak in you. Allow what? The word of God. You can sit down and talk with all the naysayers around this place. That said, in this ministry, from when um, devil a boy, which not so, because they come here because enough before them. Hallelujah. But the only way they said they are here for a long time. And if they are here for a long time and they don't understand the leadership they are under, how are they going to make you understand? Tell me. If they don't respect an honor who is set over them, how they going to respect you? And if you side with them, you think they're going to respect you afterwards. They seem to forget, say, it's not them bring your ear. You never come here because of them. So you cannot listen to them to stay here, you know. 
Do you know what the Lord going to say to you? Say, why didn't you listen to a pastor? You think saying, why say to yourself, why you never listen to your husband? Why you never listen to your wife? Why you never listen to your son and your daughter? Your mother and your father? Because the Lord himself said, you should love who he sent to lead you and teach you in the salvation more than your mother, your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter. Why you think Jesus was saying that to his disciples? You think this only Jesus alone can say it? I say, you think it's only Jesus alone can say, you must love me more than mother, brother, sister, father, and son, and daughter. Because mother, brother, sister, son, and daughter is not preaching to the saving of your soul. And sometimes to save your soul, you have to let go mother, father, sister, brother, son, and daughter. And you say, I feel me, you know. I mean, one flesh and blood. But if you keep hanging on to them, they're taking you on a different ride. Not true. You think me, you know, a brother, sister, mother, and daughter, and all those relatives, and auntie, and uncle, and grandfather, and what me have to withdraw myself. Them all the talk say, you're done with me now, you become big preachers, you're not bother with me, sin again. But what they want to into, what they call fun, <laughs> what they call having a good time, this honors my God. Yes, I thought. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. And it breaks my heart to pull away from them. I wish every day they could stand with me. But I can't stand with them where they're going. I cannot take their ride. I cannot go with their driver. Because their driver is heading to a different destination. And sometimes tears run down my face for them. Because I know where they're heading. And all are talking to them, they still believe, say, it's just me talking. And it's just my opinion. And one day they want to show me, say, I, I, I mean, they were myself over nothing. But where are they now? Many of them died and I wasn't even at the funeral. Because the Lord never even released me to go there. Funeral, pastor, Yes. Lord never even tell me to change the commission and the direction that he sent me and to go, be, go where they are. To say I'm showing up face to show support. Support for what? Those who are here can count the funerals they see me go. You check that one. You see me go every funeral. You check it. Because you must know me by now. You know who God sent you to, you know. Me say, I know everybody come. I know everybody send. But who sent to me, they know who they sent to, you know. They might play a fool like they don't know I make some people fool them up. But they know, you know. I don't get up and get up and run out kind of funeral. And it's not like I don't bear any sympathy to people that are in pain. But we have to understand if we keep following up this thing. I've seen a lot of people that start follow up funerals, say they're helping this one and then one another one and then one another friend and then one another. And all now they don't get no ministry, you know. And end up pick up some spirit and come back with and start to act clean and funny. Because they were in a lot of celebration and, and groaning and partying and, and what they call it again, night, 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 and all kind of candle lighting. What they go join up with and when they come back, they don't realize why some act strange around them. Did the Lord send you? Are you led by the Holy Spirit or are you led by the flesh? 
why did Jesus said to one disciple who's coming to him and said my father just died is not his friend you know is his father and he said my father just died give me some time let me go work up and bury him and then I will come and the Lord said to him say man if you go you're not worthy for this call what Lord I'm a father I'm a father how could the Lord say such a thing in his pain and grief enough losing his father to say let the dead bury the dead are you forgot that he said that the Lord is saying him that dead dead already but what you're dealing with here can save soul you can't save the soul of who dead already that set that already set but when you're called to bring in souls to the Lord you think you said dead have no say he said let the dead bury them let those who now watch no soul deal with the dead body them you're watching soul Come on. And everybody want rally around the whole nation rallying around for people to take vaccine. So then they save their flesh. They know the vaccine does not stop you from having corona. But they said, well, it is help you to build your immune system against it. It is true. It will help to build your immune system, your immune system become aware of it to fight it when it comes. So it doesn't have to hospitalize and kill you. True. But look at the rallying for flesh and silence for souls. Look how much are open and a no movement day for vaccine. And look at the 20 day restrict for church. And you look and say, that is good. You need a letter to come to a place of worship for God. But you can't go without a letter and a no movement there and go get vaccine. For your flesh, for something that is still not stopping from having. And it's still not stopping from dead. And you think these things are being done as godly things. That's why I don't promote this place for no vaccine. May they go take it to the right clinic. And can't come as a can take it. Where? Amen. Amen. May they tell you straight. That's why we don't promote it here, so it's not going to be no health center for no shut up vaccine. We here to declare soul for safe. And I did talk already that I'm not against the vaccine. Didn't I say that? My son take it, me take it, my daughter take it, my, my, my wife take it. My sister take it, my brother, my, my nephew take it, see me? Eh? You don't take it yet? Oh, me take it, you don't go with your mother, go take it, hush. Rasta say, no, nah, take no vaccine. All right. But me that... <laughs> All right, <laughs> but I'm telling you what I'm telling you. I told you I was not against it because I made it clear in here. Say the biggest of preacher them when they have Eddie campaign, they still take Panadol. And I know God make it. And I made it clear even to a man yesterday was say a wicked preacher them they encourage church to take vaccine a, a wicked then wicked and they become part of the system. I said to him say why why that he said because a man going a lab go create that and then they make it to you and you say them say go take it you wicked because they kill off people then I tell him say go take it. He say listen to me a man make antiseptic what do you call it anesthetic. And I said, I'm say to him, say, listen to me now, my friend. Me say, when you get one cut, a God cut you. He said, no. Me say, then you no need to stitch when he cut. I pray, I pray, and he, and he cut what, 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 what deep wound. So just come back together. You know, go figure get stitches feet. So we say, when he go get his stitches, then no inject with the anesthetic. No vaccine, no vaccine, he won't. 
We make it dead so they can stitch it. He said yes. Me say you never get none. He said yes. You get it. So me say they ain't everything. No vaccine, man. You ever make them stitch it raw? I said, Ja, help me. You should have made them. He said yes. You know rather dead now than take it because a part of the system. So me said if your children get wounded, you don't want to get no stitches and get anesthetic. He said no. You know rather than dead. Me said who they take care of your children? He said in baby mother. Me said that's why they put them in your baby mother hand. Cause they that dead long time. Amen. Amen. Because these kind of religious thoughts you have cramp your from sound thinking, you know. Even when you know say it makes sense. You're still in it. What if I the mark of the beast? Where the beast there? The only beast, the word of God said the beast, I'll go call on fire from heaven. The beast goes stand up on Monday, bow down for worship, man. People start to praise and say, Who is like the beast? None can be can stand before him, and the saints that refuse him will be killed by him. Talk to me now. So 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 how that become mark of this? Or you can buy yourself without vaccine. We vaccine the way you can buy yourself without. You know, read the scripture. You need to read the whole context and it not so. A religion turn you in a fool. Christ not turn nobody in a fool, but religion return them. Because that's why the Lord, the, the, the law was given to Israel to make them wiser than the other nations, you know. The Lord said, when you observe these laws and statutes, other nations will look on you and want to know where you get this wisdom from. And they would want to follow you and worship your God. But they made a religion out of the law. So the law that the Lord even gave them pertain to the Sabbath as a day that the Lord was giving them a sin and say, get a taste of a day without sin. So you won't have a day time with me, but a forever with me. Because I'm preparing you for that forever, you know. But I can't prepare you forever in a sin. So have a deal that you don't do what please your flesh. You do what please me. And then we're going to put that day to another day. And another week. And a month. And a year. All of those are listed as Sabbath in Leviticus 23, you know. It never lists one day Sabbath alone. It lists one, one day, one, one week, one month, and then one whole year. And in a seven times seven is what they call Jubilee. That is a 49th year. They say, and that's one year again. Is a convocation unto the Lord. Holy convocation. So, and he said it must be an eternal practice amongst them. So all they only stop on one. And saying they cannot keep, they cannot be holy more than one day. Because that's the day the Lord gave them. See, they made a religion of God's law. God didn't give the, religion, the law as a means for religion. He gave the law as a means to point them to salvation, which is to Christ, their Savior. Come on. Who would teach them how to fulfill the righteousness of the law. Come on now. But they miss that and just sickle for religion and use that same religion to condemn him to death. Come on now. Talk to me, somebody. That's not God's tell somebody that's not God's intention. God has something better for you. Come on, somebody. God religion was not God's idea. That's man's idea. When we are called to Christ, Christ didn't call us to Christianity. The gift of God is not Christianity. 
The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that eternal life is a God kind of life. The life of the godly is different from the life of the ungodly. Hallelujah. And so if you're in Christ, he says you are drawing from that life. And there's no sin in him. Come on now. There is no sin in him. So anyone love the Lord cannot stay in sin. It is impossible. Sin torments a person that loves the Lord. It torments any other step into it. That's the most vilest and shameful way they feel and disconnect and distance and empty and unfulfilled. So they have to run back to him to be restored. And after being restored, they don't want to go back to that again. Come on, somebody. Because there's a new nature within them that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. And the word of God said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Come on, somebody. So if you're filled of righteousness, oh, you're going to go back to sin. There's no righteousness in sin. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I tell you, when you come to love the Lord, it's going to show in all your lovely brothers. It's going to show in all your lovely brothers. And I heard a lot of people talk some things about some brothers and sisters. I to say, man, I said, no, you don't know them. Come on, you don't know them. Oh, no, you see. Yeah. When, when your children come and talk to me about you, since you don't know that sometimes they do. <laughs> when, your when your children come and talk to me about you, why you think so? they, they still respect you? Because I don't whip you before them. And when you come and talk to me about your children, why you think I don't whip them that they don't want to come and you want to throw them out? Because I still talk to you good about them. That's what keeps the family together, ain't it? So if you come and talk to me about your husband and I don't want your husband with you, then the marriage is not done and your husband has to move out and things split up. But if it's defending your husband to you, I mean, I defend him, I mean, I sin, but I want you to see that in spite of the sin or wrongs he has committed, there's a cause behind God putting you with him. And if you work with a cause, then you can overcome that sin. No, man, no, sir. He no understand what me they do with. He see them and things. He has to steal your thing. Then he easy. You don't know what hell me they go to. You don't know the hell that Christ went through for you. And you are forgetful about it. That's why you can behave like that. Going through it for somebody else. Because you have the impression that you wasn't so bad. That's why the Lord saved you. But if you really get a revelation of how terrible you were. You would be more patient with others. Because somebody was patient with you. For you to be where you are. So when they ask me, how do you do it, Apostle? I don't know you do with those people. I tell it because the Lord did it for me. If he didn't do it for me, I wouldn't have no tolerance to do it for them. I know the kind of mess I was before the Lord for me. I know the kind of ways that I had before the Lord drew me out of those things. I know the, the part I was heading on and what, how much damage I would have caused to myself and to every loving and living thing around me. And I was blind to it. I think that I was always right. And the Lord opened my eyes and showed me. I melted at his feet. I wept. 
before him, seeing how deplorable a condition I was in, yet thinking I was all of that. And when the Lord showed me what he took me out of, and, and when I realized all of that, I felt unworthy for what he was going to take me to be. And that's why I said, I, I don't want to be up there. I will help. But I don't want to be up there. But the Lord said, no, that's where I'm putting you. Because I want you up here to help them down there. Because you were down there. It's a tolerance. Jesus spoke about that to Simon the Pharisee who invited him to house, who was a leper that the Lord healed and he invited the Lord to his house. And the Lord, a woman came to his house with an alabaster box and poured it on Jesus and he, he felt offended because he felt like this kind of woman shouldn't be touching Jesus like that and pouring those expensive perfume and rubbing her hair with his feet like she have some other intention and looking for some glory or attention to herself. But the Lord said to Simon, you know, I came to your house under your invitation and no one washed my feet but this woman keep washing my feet with her tears i came under your invitation but no one greeted me with a kiss and this woman has not stopped kissing my feet i came under your invitation and this you, no one offered me any perfume or anything to fresh myself from my journey i was coming but this woman has poured her expensive perfume all of it out on me and he says, you are looking at her past. <laughs> You're looking at her past and concluding from what you know of her past to be her present. But the Lord said to him, to whom much is given, much is required. He says, who have been forgiven a lot will have more tolerance for those who are in error. Lord Jesus. So you think that apostle just forgiving so because why the grace and power of God upon him so strong. Because I've been forgiven of so much. I could tell you things that make your skin crawl. And makes you wonder if you want to come back and hear from me again. No, Apostle. Ah, so you all say. Ah, Jesus. But the Lord took me out of that mess. He took me out. Am I talking to somebody? I said he took me out. So the Lord says, if you've been taken out of a lot of things that you regard as shameful and you wouldn't even, you'll be so ashamed to even mention it. He says, you, you must have some, some empathy towards those who are undergoing that mess. Not to be quick to cut them off. Ah, Jesus. Because you know what the Lord has done for you. I know what the Lord has done for me. That's why I can, I, I've talked with people who have been insulting and arrogant and rude and loud and raucous, ill behaved and, and still be able to love and respect and still talk to them. Because I, I know I used to give that mess to. And it wasn't God that I even just take me up, but somebody walked with me through it. I didn't come out by myself, just me and God. And a lot of people that saying just me and God need to take a, a further examination and look who really was with you that took you out. Because you never come out, just you are no God. God used somebody to help you with that work. Even Jesus 
carrying the cross got weary and could not carry it anymore and they forced a man called Simon of Cyrene to help him carry the cross. He's God in human flesh but he couldn't carry it any further. That flesh was so bad and torn he needed human help. But you're going like you don't need no human help because you know God. But up to Jesus needed it. Come on. And you got to understand where God put that help in your life and you snug it off. You're only meaning yourself more hurt. Come on, somebody. You got to understand what God is calling you into. Hello. And embrace the anointing he's calling into into the new life you have in Christ Jesus. Hello. You can't keep living the same way you're living. That you used to live from the past and every church you left from your costly pastor. And every church you left from you say that them went do it wrong. You need to humble yourself and settle somewhere where God can disciple you and train you and get those ways out to you that you can have true relationship with him. Because if you have in power struggle with those who simple flesh that God put over you, you're going to have power struggle with everybody God put over you. Uh, and you have to be under somebody. Hallelujah. So you have to deal with it. Hallelujah. So if you, you continue with everybody God put over you, then, then how are you going to make it? Talk to me. Hey, you keep wrestling with those who God put to lead you. You won't make it. Because God didn't put them to lead you as a sideshow. It's something you see coming. And out of need and love for you, he positioned that person by your side to help you. And we can be at a place where we start to push with the help God provides. And then apply the man that out at sea. And say, Lord, why didn't you save me? And the ship come. And the boat come. And the helicopter come. And he's still out there and John can waiting on God to come. And it's the Lord that sent all those help for him to save him. You got it. But because he pushed that help away. You notice that? He pushed that help away. You got it? The, the word of God says, it was Jerusalem that cried for their Savior to come in. And the Lord says, how long have I long to gather you? The help had now come, but they were pushing it away. He says, how long have I long, I long to gather you? Like a hen gathered her chicks under my covering, but you would not let me. And now your house is left in ruins. Come on. I could say that over and over. And persons hear the testimony over and over and still come and do the same thing that they said they complain about others doing but they did not check their heart to make sure they don't do it. And the same hole that others fell in that they said, I wouldn't do that. They come and fall in the same hole. Because they were not guarding their heart. And they allow bitterness, offense, and iniquity to creep in. Like what Peter said to, 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 to um, the, the Simon of Sy that that was a sorcerer. He had repented and he baptized, but he says, as discern that your heart is bound with bitterness and iniquity. Your heart is bound with bitterness and iniquity. And Simon had to say to, to, to Peter, uh, pray that those things you have said to 
do not come upon me. He didn't say, well, I can talk to God. God will hear me. No, he says, you pray. I need your covering on this. You pray that these things you said will not come upon me. Come on. Come on, somebody. He says, repent, therefore, of this your wickedness. And I pray if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned. You do you come in the church, you didn't come in good. That's what Peter was saying to him. He was there quite a while before Peter and John coming. But Peter was saying to him, You're baptizing, you put on a witchcraft, and you lock down your shop, but you still have some of those ways. Because why would you offer to buy? what God has anointed his servants with. Why would you seek to corrupt God's gift with money? So Peter could have dealt with it, say, true, you my young believer, you know, quite understand, I just had a different view, you know, you know realize that. So, no, Peter said, no, I discern that your bone you're born with iniquity and bitterness and wickedness in your heart. In other words, you still have some offense carrying, say, Philip, come down with him, preach like gospel and lock up your shop. You can't make the money you used to make from the whole town of Samaria again because of these men. And now you desire to give them money so you can't have the gift for them have, so you can't have back your empire. He so said, your heart is not right. Come on. Hallelujah. And he says, pray. What he said? Simon. Simon said, pray to the Lord for me. He told Simon to pray for himself. There it is in verse 22. Pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. And he said to Peter, the apostle said, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. Come on. That takes humility. Peter did not, did not say this to him privately. He said it to him publicly. The people heard it and they recorded it. It's not recorded by Simon the Sorcerer. It's recorded by the apostles. That we could read that such a thing happened today. It's not here, say. It's written. Hello. And you got to understand when God calls you, he don't call you for some show. It's something supernatural God wants to do in your life. And if you keep fighting against who the Lord sent to bring you into it, you cannot come into it. And you need to understand the importance of God using flesh to demonstrate his salvation to you. God using flesh to demonstrate his salvation to you is what God always do. From the beginning to the end. God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He's using flesh to bring about salvation. The cross is a testimony of that flesh to bring about salvation. Come on. And he's still doing it today. Are you hearing him? Come on, stand up. We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Give up a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. You know something that the Lord told me to say something to you, and I'm going to say it. And then I'm through here. Hallelujah. You listening? You listening? 
here the Lord told me to say this to you and I was about to close but he said I should still say it so I'm going to say it he reminded me to say it ah yes you can have your own way you hear me you can have your own way because you have free will but if you have your own way you will not have what you want to have hallelujah you can have your own way and have go about it the way you want to go about it and do what you want to do but you will not have what you want to have when you do it that way I'm not in this because I'm having my own way my own way would not have me here it also applies to you so be careful this is the caution the Lord gave me to give you be careful you don't get your own way because you're going to get what you don't want and when you fight and fight and get your own way know that what your own way produces is coming that's why the Lord has sent help for you that you don't have it your way but you have it his way that come with all the benefits he has designed for you you with me here come on lift those hands for your glory <laughs> I would do anything just to see you <laughs> Oh Lord, to behold you as my King, for your glory, I would do anything <laughs> just to see you, to behold you as my King. Come on, say it again. For your glory. Oh, I would do anything <laughs> just to see you, <laughs> to behold you as my king. One more time, for your glory, hallelujah, I would do anything <laughs> just to see you, to behold my king I want to be where you are come on I gotta be where yes he's the way the truth and the life Thomas said how oh, can I get to there if I don't know where you're going hey I want to be where but he says I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me, I want to be, oh, for your glory, hallelujah, I would do, robo shemasa, yeah, just to see you, to behold you as my king, robo mamasa, for your glory, anybody, anybody, I would do, just to see, see you, to behold you, to behold you as my want to be where you, oh God. Yes, Lord, you know your way is the right way. In the secret place of your pavilion. Oh Lord, take me there in your dwelling place. 
Rosha. Move God. <laughs> Flood through our spirit. <laughs> Flood through our souls. Sanctify our hearts. Renew our minds. Captivate our lives. Mm. With your presence, Lord. With your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody right now. It don't matter what you have done before. Take this time now and bear your heart before God. He's not against you. He wants you to know him in a very real way. Teachers were sent to the body of Christ because of the prayers of the body of Christ. It is your prayers that drew leaders. It was the cries of the children of Israel in Egypt that drew Moses. It was the cries, hallelujah, that God heard of Israel in the famine that made him send forth Joseph. It was the cries, hallelujah of his people under the dominion of darkness that is sent forth his son Jesus Christ is the cries of the body of Christ that Christ sent forth apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints that there be no more children tossed to and fro with wind of every wind of doctrine by the craftiness, trickery, and deceitfulness of men. He wants you to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Would you humble yourself? For he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up in due season Isaiah said to the Lord who have believed our report and to whom the hand of the Lord is revealed the hand of the Lord do it valiantly the hand of the Lord, hallelujah, saves and delivers. Come on, somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have a purpose and a calling upon our lives to live and to move and speak and operate as true children of God that we will not worship you from afar or give you mere lip service you will not conclude things to ourselves that you have not concluded and make rash decisions that prove us to be foolish that we embrace your Holy Spirit in all we say and do without which none of us shall see the Lord we pray grace over the hearers today that they will not be hearers only of the word but be doers also that they will not just hear and deceive themselves but that they will abide in the truth and the truth will abide in them. And there is no lie in truth. Thank you for grace and more grace and more grace and more grace. And what the enemy meant for evil, 
to be turned around for good and clarity of heart and thoughts to those who hear flush every toxic thing out of their minds that the devil has sown that they will embrace you in all your power ah, that your true nature will shine forth in them we give you the praise and we give you the glory now let your healing powers flow through every ear of our bodies let your healing virtues flow now Lord healing waters flow through every ear every nerve every organ every my God every intestines and organs muscle and tenures and blood cells and tissues my God be healed in the name of Jesus we release God's healing power over you we rebuke every dysfunction and disorder in your body things known and things unknown things revealed and things yet to be revealed we bind by the power of the Holy Spirit and the word and render ineffective right now null and void in the name of Jesus and that divine health will spring forth in your body right now because healing is the children's word the very life of God lives in you and the gates of hell cannot prevail against you sickness and disease shall be far from you hallelujah and lack shall be far from you we call for provision from the north the south the east and the west we call for mega release of substance in your hands substance in your doorstep substance to your gates opportunities and visions and ideas hallelujah favor will come your way in manifold dimensions we give it a praise Lord come on somebody praise him right now grace upon grace grace upon grace Satan is defeated God is exalted thank you Lord thank you Lord Mm -hmm. yes Lord we honor you we adore you we magnify you we glorified in this let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight you are our strength and our redeemer we give the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Somebody give him the glory to the most high God one more time. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. They give you a chance to sow and then release you. Just put up your hands and envelopes to be given to you. Those who are watching, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We're at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. He wanted to know the truth, the whole truth and none but the truth. You see, there's a lot of people who say they're the truth and it's not. But the truth always bears witness. It bears witness is more than just talk hallelujah and i pray that god will open your eyes to see because truth manifested himself in the body of the person called jesus christ and the israel though they were calling for the truth many years to deliver them did not honor 
nor accept their time of visitation they in turn rejected the truth and in turn was cut off from the benefits the welfare that God had prepared for them but not all were cut off and so we are calling for those who hear the word he said whosoever will let him come hear what the Lord is saying he says if you hear harden not your heart harden not your heart unbelief hardens the heart sin hardens the heart and he says if you resist those things hallelujah grace will find you and will restore you into the life that God has for you in Christ Jesus I encourage you to move into it don't be satisfied with religion and with the concept or thought that you're all right by yourself run to the rock of your salvation and he will instruct and lead you into the house of God and the godly leadership that will direct you as the word of God said in, in, in Jeremiah 3 verse 15 give you passes according to my heart that will teach you knowledge and understanding that is for you to give grace to produce fruit from the word you must have knowledge and understanding so if you want to know more about this ministry check out our website it's increasingfaithintl.org hallelujah you can sow to us through that ministry you can go on the what about us page about us page and you will see uh, the different areas of our ministry and the different things that we do through this ministry and as you watch over through those things if the lord prepped in your heart something that you are connecting with that you know together we can accomplish we are more than willing to receive and accept any help to get these visions accomplished and fulfilled because it is the word of the lord and we must run to it to get it done and god is raising up his mighty army to get the work done in the land hallelujah it says when noah had finished build the ark then the word of God says the Lord told him to bring those those two of every kind of animals in and go in and he sealed the door and then the judgment fell just as he said to us that when this gospel of the kingdom is preached to all the ends of the earth then the end will come so you're sowing to the ministry you're sowing to a ministry where the gospel of the kingdom is being preached is drawing in that end we don't want to forever stay in this kind of world in this kind of immorality and perversion we are looking for a city whose builder and maker is god it's called the city of the righteous and only the righteous dwell therein for it says even lot righteous soul was vexed daily living amongst the people in sodom and gomorrah until the lord led him out Come on, somebody. So I said, the Lord know how to deliver his people. Hallelujah. Out of every affliction. And so we consider that God is going to do it for you too. But we must work together to get the work done. There are people who are to help Noah to build that ark. He didn't go cutting all that wood to build an ark big like a ship 450 feet wide, 750 feet long. That's a lot of lumber, a lot of stories, a lot of wood cutting and no one is boys and, and their, their wives alone didn't do it. So I'm sure at times they had to hire help, they had to get help to get it done but at the end of the day it was done. And we don't want it to be one that just so to us for it to be done. He wants you to be in line that when it is done, you're in it with us. Praise God. So be strong in the Lord. The path is might Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. Father, we thank you that your word has gone forth, not just to tickle our ears. For you said there be those who not endure sound doctrine, who would have each ears joined teach us to themselves, and would not endure what is sown to truth and to the knowledge of God and so I pray grace over the hearers that as they hear today it will not just be what and ducks back hallelujah but it will it will saturate every fiber of their being their word will be engrafted in their spirit and that it will bear fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains to the glory of you father you want to be glorified in them that they bear fruit and they must bear fruit you want to see the character the nature and the spirit of 
your spirit being manifested through them in this earth for the whole creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God and the sons of God are rising hallelujah you're raising them up from all different walks of life to come into this fellowship this knowledge this relationship with you through your son Jesus Christ and your Holy Spirit and so we pray that as we walk by faith and not by sight we will not allow the things of the world to, to, to deflate us to derail us or to corrupt us but that we stay focused and continue for you said if we hold steadfast to the things that you have called us to then we will not lack any good thing or come behind in anything from producing the full work that you want to see that you can say well done good and faithful servant we praise you and bless you father in Jesus' name Come on, give him the praise right now. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, everybody. Lift those hands to Jesus. Father, we pray for a covering over every house that's represented here. Special anointing over every house. Even those who are watching and their family and their loved ones and their business. Hallelujah. And their children and their children's children. Hallelujah. And their ministry. That they be refreshed and revived and renewed. Re-energized. Refocused. Realigned with your kingdom, oh God. And the power of your kingdom will manifest more and more and more in their lives. To the testimony of your spirit dwelling in them. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise and the glory right now. Hallelujah. 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 You've been blessed today. Oh, I've been truly blessed and blessed to have you as my company today. Hallelujah. And those of us online, we also bless you for taking the time to do so. Hallelujah. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Power of his mind. Bless you all.